Hey guys, Metal Stash here again, and as you guys can tell from the title, I'm going over my mini map. Uh, this is not going to be a very uh, intense mini map, but it is going to be a mini map that is more than what you'll find online because I've viewed a lot of videos on. Uh, different mini maps, and most of them are basically the same thing. They're just a basic mini map with a camera floating above the map, and uh, there really isn't anything for an RTS mini map, which is actually more complicated. So, I wanted to show you guys what I kind of came up with. Uh, it's a combination of different ideas that I've had and kind of seen online. So, let's get into the project. You know, I have the same same thing I've had for a while, uh, because I'm just testing a lot of crap. Uh, but the initial thing you want, yes, I am using a camera that is floating above the screen. Uh, it's set to orthographic. I set the size of it, and I just set the. Uh, you want to make sure the depth that you have for the camera is higher than the depth. Sorry than the depth that you use on your player camera because that's the uh, it's the times that they the uh, game renders the cameras or the layer that they render them on so if you, you have a higher depth it'll render above the layer that a camera with a lower depth has so then I uh, I in my uh, minimap script I just set the uh, the X and Y position and the width and height to be certain values so that it matches up with the GUI that's there. But uh, staying with the within the project for right now, uh, what I've added to all the objects in the game is a new script uh, called Map Item. This is uh, something that I found on a video online that it was actually taken from an RPG game I didn't take it I just took the idea uh, where it initially just creates an object same size as the object it's parent of um, no I don't want to change my color scheme that was random um but so it sets the object that it creates to the same size as the object that it's its parent or connected to um, and then in my case I set its color to be also the same so that you know you get the same color team on you know the same mini map and all that so that's uh, all I added to the objects within the world I uh, you know also adding them to the obstacles and the ground uh, I didn't add it to that ground, I'm not sure why, but it really doesn't make that much difference once you see it. Which, actually, let me show you guys what it looks like. Kind of went out of order with that, but really doesn't change much. So, I have my minimap display here in the bottom left. So, if I highlight some units and move them around, you'll also see at the bottom, it, you know, it updates it because you just have a camera on th in the top of the screen displaying the whole map and uh, I also have ledges here and an obstacle here that's also being rendered and to do this using the map item script that I've created it's actually fairly simple I only need one function which is the start function because I don't need it to update anything after that. All I need it to is first create. I use the uh, cube primitive because it's simple, doesn't need any special uh, scaling or size, uh, and it doesn't have a lot of polygons, which I like because I've also been complaining about the plain po uh, polys that uh, the uh, like normal plane has and I know this is kind of off topic here but this is a really useful script if you guys can find it online I will try to put the link in the description of where I got it 
uh, is a script called create plane and you can create a plane certain width and height and set how many segments you want with, uh, in that and then create it and it creates it for you through a proce procedural script it is so handy dandy when you need a plane that is just one by one or you know one poly you, know, you just want that one poly plane because you don't need all those polygons but back to my ma map item script so I create the prim primitive cube and I set its name to map bounds I use that later to set its color which I'll show you uh, and then I set its layer to uh, 11 which is a new layer that I've created and that is minimap layer that is associated with the culling mask on the minimap camera so that it only sees what is created in the minimap, minimap layer and the player camera does not see that so you don't get interfering uh, colors or anything like that then I destroy the uh, collider component because I don't need that I don't need any collisions to happen with uh, with the minimap objects because that's already handled through the uh, units themselves and the, and the uh, obstacles so then I set its parent to be the transform this is how you set uh, parenting it took me a little bit to actually figure that out uh, I had to just do a quick google search to find that but I uh, you know I was kinda it, it just took me a little bit to figure that out I uh, so it just sets the uh, transform parent to transform which is the unit so like if I played this for you guys you can see each unit has its own map bounds and uh, map bounds object and is child of it so movements already handled by the unit so you don't have to worry about that then I set scale to 111 so that it is the same size as the unit position to 000 because that's local position and the render color to the parent render color um, that doesn't work for units because I set the color of the unit later in the selectable script so I had to add another uh, uh, line in my selectable script to get that work but this works normally for any other object in the game like the ground obstacles things like that because their color doesn't change at startup uh, I changed the color at startup for the units because uh, when they're created they're set to you know their own team and all that so I just get the uh, map bounds render set its color to the same color as what the units color is set to so that's why it was key that I named it map bounds so that I could access it later uh, as what I want it to be named as um, so I think that's about it for uh, getting my minimap to work. Uh, to get the obstacles or the ledges to work, I didn't show you guys this, but um, I changed them to these skinny little boxes here, colored them black. And since I don't have their ledges, I don't need their mesh render on. But uh, as long as they have a uh, 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 material and color when you add the map item script to it automatically gets the color of it so that when you play it it will render this nifty little ledge here and it's just kind of a cool effect and it doesn't take any processing really because um, there's not much to process for it and uh, that's about it guys my next video I uh, I'm going to be going uh, over my uh, GUI but right now my GUI isn't quite what I want it to be so I'm gonna spend some time getting that to work because I can't actually click when I have units highlighted I can't actually click the uh, buttons to select a certain unit and I can't actually like set an action yet so I'm working on that and uh, I guess I'll see you guys later thanks for watching and uh, bye